Uh, first of all, thanks for coming and thanks for TCD. I hope for open this page. Space. Uh, I'm sorry for my bad English, but I, I hope you can understand me. And in case of emergency, I ask you your help. Uh, <laughs> uh, Today I will present, uh, the, my presentation is the Atlantic Forest Trail, connecting people, biodiversity and protected areas. As Igor said, I'm a, a PhD student at SNRE, and I also worked to the Brazilian Federal Agency for Protected Areas, the SNET. Uh, I'd like to start with my academic background. Uh, I got my master in, in ecology at the University, at the University of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, I studied the, the differential extinction vulnerabilities of small mammals in fragmented landscapes in the Atlantic Forest. Um, just after my master, I became a, a worker in the Federal Agents for Protected Areas. And in 2004, I became the the superintendent of Serra dos Orgas National Park, that is the third, third is old, third oldest uh, Brazilian National Park, created in 1939. Uh, seven years after I moved to, to the, the main office of the agency uh, to work as a national coordinator of ecotourism during almost two years, and I moved back to Rio to, to work as the superintendent of Tijuca National Park. That is the most visited Brazilian national park. Uh, it's located inside the Rio de Janeiro and was uh, the Christ the Redeemer statue and a lot of attractions uh, where I worked until 2018. Um, working in our, both are mountain parks and I work with trails a lot in these in this functions. One of them is the most uh, traditional overnight trail in Brazil, that is uh, the Petrópolis Stereosopolis Crossing Trail. That is the, the only way uh, mountain refugees and structures to receive hikers. Uh, in 2000, 2012, I, I worked with many partners to implement the, uh, the Trans Carioca Trail. It's a trail that cross uh, six parks inside the city of Rio de Janeiro with 140 kilometers. Um, and by this two experience, I was invited to present my, my experience in the Brazilian Congress for Protected Areas in 2012. And when I was preparing my presentation, I think to connect both the trails that are about 100 kilometers far from each other. Uh, and the idea extended a little bit more. And I presented the idea to uh, build a trail that crossed the Brazilian coast, the Brazilian southern coast, along the, the mountains, uh, connecting the largest forest remnants of the, the Atlantic mm -hmm. forest and many attractions and communities and ecosystems and indigenous lands and more. My inspiration was the Appalachian Trail that most of you probably know. Uh, it, that crossed the, the Appalachian Mountains along the, the eastern coast of the United States, which is proposed in 1921 in a forest, uh, Bento Marque. And the first through hiking uh, on the Appalachian were in 1937. This trail has 3,500 kilometers and crossed 14 states of the, the US. Um, as, as well the, as, as the Appalachian, the Atlantic Forest uh, follows the, the this mountain range, the coastal mountain range in the eastern Brazilian coast. That is the, they call it Serra do Mar, means uh, mountains of the sea. Um, but different uh, from the, the Appalachian, the Atlantic Forest uh, go up and down many times in the, in the mountains, going to the beaches and mangroves and going back to the mountains and canyons and a lot of different environments. 
uh, uh, looking at uh, the Atlantic forest, uh, uh, it's one of the most diverse uh, environments and biomes in, in the world, uh, with more than 20,000 plant species, being about 40% endemic, and has more than 2,000 vertebrate species, about a half endemic, and a lot of threatened species. And the last better that they have is 185 within 100 endemic. The Atlantic Forest was intensely occupied and, and destroyed by, since the, the, the European colonization in the last 500, 500 years. Uh, this uh, this area is the original area covered by the Atlantic Forest and in green the, the remnants. Uh, with a zoom in the Atlantic Forest Trail area, we can see that the, the largest remnants are in the coast of Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo and Paraná and are crossed by, by the trail. Uh, the remnants cover less than 26% of the original area. And if we consider uh, only fragments with more than 10 hectares, 10 hectares that's a, a teeny fragment, uh, only uh, uh, about 11% uh, it's the, the, the remnant. Um, 7% of the Brazilian population lives inside the Atlantic <coughs> area and 8% uh, of the Brazilian GDP is, is from the Atlantic area, the Atlantic Coast area. This uh, conflict between the many people in the human activities and the biodiversity uh, uh, do the, the Atlantic Forest as one of the, the most important uh, biodiversity hotspots in the world. Uh, about, uh, considering the, this, this level of destruction, uh, reconnect the, 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 the forest remnants are one of the main challenges for the, the the Atlantic Forest Conservation. And to face this challenge, we developed the, the, the project uh, using the Atlantic Forest Trail as the uh, next of the, the project. Uh, the project has the resumed mission of reconnecting people, biodiversity, and protected areas. And uh, the mission of to engage societies in the conservation and recovery of the Atlantic forests through outdoor activities in the connection of natural areas along the 4,000 kilometers of trail, promoting inclusive socioeconomic development and appreciation of natural and cultural heritage. The project has a lot of partners, uh, led by WWF Brazil and SNBU, and the state uh, agents for protected areas, the uh, climbers and hikers uh, organizations, uh, universities, other research institutions, many local NGOs and many local governments. Uh, the organization of the project started in, in 2014 uh, with uh, general and regional meetings promoted by WWF in four states. And we organized the, the governance in, at three levels. Uh, we have a general commission that joins uh, the CNP, WWF, the Brazilian Federation of Hikers and many other partners. And we have state coordinations that uh, do the, the contact, make contacts with uh, the local governments and other partners and manage the, uh, the project itself and local groups that do the, the, the works in the field, uh, uh, managing the trail, implementing and making contact with people. Uh, we divided the project in four components that uh, resume the, the goals, and I will present a little bit more about each one. The, the first component is to implement the trail itself, 
but we we use a lot of historical trails and existing tra tourist trails in, in the parks and other areas. We just connected them and using or new trails or or even uh, rural roads and other areas. Um, the the goal is to connect the the as much as possible like the protected areas, the traditional communities, if they they want, and, and natural attraction, the structures and other ecosystems. The trail across these five states from the from the Rio Grande do Sul, the southeast Brazilian states to Rio de Janeiro. And the 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 macro route was defined by the General Commission. Um, and guidelines to define what's the the, the standards to, to choose the the, 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 the routes and, and others. But the the route itself was defined by in small at small scale with local partners and, and expert people who really know the, the trails in in the field. Um, Today, the trail across 138 protected areas, uh, including federal, state, local, and private reserves, uh, being uh, 10 national parks. And the, the total area protected are 3 million hectares, if you consider the, the sum of the, the, the protected areas. Uh, the trail also across uh, 17 indigenous lands. Uh, which is interesting because the history of Brazil is similar to the U.S. The, the, the indigenous peoples along the coast were almost totally killed, but the uh, small, uh, small communities that remain in isolated areas along the coast. Uh, and the trail also crossed uh, 13 quilombos that are uh, Communities formed by uh, ex slavers that uh, run out from the slavery and form isolated communities. Um, about the trailblazing, we use this symbol that is an arrow and also a, a camp tent and also has the MA, the Mata Atlantica. Uh, the, the symbol was chosen by election in the internet to engage people uh, and we already have uh, 100 kilometers uh, mark. Uh, in other front, we try to support protected areas and local communities to, to receive visitors with structures like these this lookout points built in, built in status organs. Uh, sponsored by WWF. The second component uh, has to go to engage society in conservation, uh, promoting outdoor activity, volunteer, and citizen science. We have a website to, uh, to spread information about the, the trail and the project and to register volunteer. For now, we have about 4,000 volunteers registered. And we have pages and profiles on social media. And we also have a, uh, we are developing uh, an interactive map. I will try to show you. Uh, In this map, you can see the protected areas and you know, uh, a little bit more about them, see photos and I, how can I? <laughs> <laughs> and about indigenous lands and the trail if the trail is a road or a trail it's if it's marked or not and information about uh, local operators of groups 
I lost the trip. Uh oh. <laughs> Last. Uh, so there is a lot of resources. <laughs> We promoted workshops in, in, in each state and region and to engage people, mobilize it, to plan their actions at local level and to plan volunteers about the air management of the issues. We promoted more than 40 workshops in four states now. And after the, the some some workshops we have activities on the field, which is really interesting because we can feel the, the engagement and the sense of belonging in the people who take part in it. They, they love the, the, the outdoor activity and also the contact and, and to have a sense of belonging to the trail and the parks. So interesting. Uh, the, the project is still beginning, but we received a lot of attention from the media. Um, and we ever uh, take attention to, to the conservation goals, not only the, the tourism tourist goals. And we think the, the Atlantic Forest was the only Brazilian site uh, chosen by, by the New York Times one of one of the place to go in any time. The third component is uh, focus on local sustainable tourism uh, and to create new alternatives so to strengthen the existing services uh, provided by local people. We, we have partnerships with many small uh, operators like campings, margins, guides, and we promote the, this, these activities. And it's interesting to, to the hikers, but it's a, a help for, for them to, to plan their trips. And as a counterpart, the, this local activities support the volunteers and maybe lodging the, the volunteers or even uh, doing the, the management by itself. Um, this woman is uh, an interesting example. Uh, she, she bought an, a, a grassland more than 30 years ago and created a private reserve to recover the forest. And it's a, a corridor between two protected areas and now it's a, a private reserve and the trail across the uh, uh, area and she received people, the hikers, and tell her stories and I think that's a, a practical demonstration of how to engage people in special action. We also are developing uh, products to <laughs> But uh, it's uh, still a work in progress. The idea is to that local people can produce this, this, this products to, to their incomes for the project and then the project will work. The fourth component is about research and biodiversity and works to conserve, monitor, and recover the connectivity between the the forest remnants. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to create a network of researchers along the trail uh, to assess remnants and identify uh, priority areas to, to recover corridors or to monitor. Uh, we also worked with citizen science. We promoted this app, CGEL. It's Made by a field cruise, it's a field research institution in Brazil. And we can register any animal, bad, bad, or, or sick, or 
given uh, health, and we can use it to, to monitor the trail. Uh, if we have a, a big problem, that we, we promote uh, to, to the hikers and strengthen the, the initiative of their teams, and they pass the results. And it was just a, uh, among a buffer uh, in the trail as as it was to us. Um, we also have the, the, the dream to implement a, like a mega transect along the center of the map to, to monitor uh, biodiversity and maybe climate change. It's an extended uh, gradient. Uh, both altitudinal and latitudinal, it's uh, uh, a good uh, possibility to, to monitor the, the climate change. And we can use the volunteers to collect the data and put in the, in the database. Uh, we also have uh, initiatives about the, the, the threatened species or um, or a species that would be good indicators of the landscape connections, like the, the puma. The jaguar is almost extinct in, in the country forest, but has some populations along the trail. And also the wood spider monkeys, monkey that, that is the, the, the largest find in the jaguars. It's in them for the future. And our first uh, campaigns. With our first campaigns, we produced a short video. Um, 
implement to begin to develop a conceptual framework and to also My conceptual framework is based on three elements the natural environment, the hybrids, and the hybrids. And how they are the relationships. Uh, the natural environment provides a place to build a trail. And the trail provides laser opportunities for hikers. And it's expected that uh, hikers provide political support to conserve natural environments to have a good trail. Um, there's another, another relationship that hikers provide incomes for local communities, hiring service and structure. Uh, and it's expected that local communities uh, stimulated by these relationships and uh, provide a concert, concert more the, the, the areas sound and their data environments. There's a lot of other feedbacks in this relationship, like the system services provided to high, both to high present much minutes and many others, but like trying to simplify it. Um, and I hope to, to study this with three different approaches. Uh, and I collect examples for sure. Uh, some questions that I can, I can have. Uh, long distance trails contributed to the, the designation of new protected areas, uh, forest program program, and, and other uh, environmental benefits. Uh, I can uh, measure this in another long distance phase uh, along the time. Uh, long distance trails increase the people interest in, in protecting the air and natural environment. And people who experience these activities uh, change their minds and, and show more awareness and, and environment and engagement about special measures. Uh, looking for this relationship between hikers and local communities, uh, long distance trails contribute significantly to local or regional economies. And another uh, question in this social approach uh, many people today uh, travel to know traditional cultures and, and people interested in this kind of. Uh, experience and the interest showed by the by these hikers would uh, improve the self esteem of the local community to, to power to handle the, the, the culture and the thing. Uh, looking for this relationship, uh, long distance trail influence the land use at local scale. Uh, the, the, the lengths close to the trail are more and better conserved than, than the others. And the income generated by this tourism activities related to the trail are sufficient are enough to, to stimulate private owners and local communities to conserve the links. Or the, uh, it's not sufficient to, to avoid cattle ranching or agriculture or other economic activities. And the long distance trail and the, this whole chain of relationships affect the perception of local communities about them. A lot of questions, and, and I have much more. <laughs> uh, and if we, we can conclude that the trails can really contribute to conservation. Which, what factors influence the success of failure of uh, a long distance failure to conserve uh, as a conservation strategy? There's a lot of possibilities. What, what is, are the, the, the variables that explain this? Is the, the socioeconomic context of the country, uh, the, the investment in terms of the structure, the, the physical aspect like uh, security? or the level of local participation and engagement in the decision-making process. 
that is, I have a lot of questions and uh, a long trail ahead in this research. Uh, uh, and what we respect is to inspire people to engage in conservation efforts. And we have this logo the people in the heart of the forest and the forest in the heart of people to be involved in that. Thank you for the presentation. There uh, are questions. <laughs> it's my email, the website of the project, and the profiles in the, in the social media. Thank you.